part of the Boundless Audio Podcast Network. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Artist Pivot Podcast. I am your host, Ayana Major Bay, and I happen to be an actor, voiceover artist, mentor, and world traveler. This is a bi-weekly show featuring conversations about pivots and life lessons from the perspective of artists, those who work in and around the arts, and arts educators. Everyone possesses the ability to pivot. You just have to be reminded sometimes, and that is what I am here to do. To stay up to date and in the know about merchandise, exclusive content, and how to support the show, please subscribe to the newsletter at ayanabay.com slash podcast. That's A-Y-A-N-A-B-E-Y dot com slash podcast. And there is a link in the show notes. We'll get to this week's episode after a word from our sponsors. I have found that therapy is a tool to use to improve your life in one of the healthiest ways. For those who are working on their mental health and well-being, on a journey of facing your fears, or trying therapy for the first time, our show sponsor BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Artist Pivot. That's BetterHelp.com slash Artist Pivot. All right, y'all. So today on the podcast, I am so excited to say that joining me is Julio Augustin. He is an associate professor and director of musical theater at Elon University. He has performed in six Broadway shows, including Chicago, Fosse, Steel Pier, and others. As a director choreographer, he has been nominated for such awards as the Adelco Award, Best Director for Sweet Charity at New Harlem Arts Theater in New York, Syracuse Area Live Theater, Best Choreographer in the Heights at Hangar Theater and Houston Press, Best Choreographer Guys and Dolls at Theater Under the Stars. He has written the book and lyrics to two musicals and is the author of the Professional Actors Handbook from Casting Call to Curtain Call and also navigating the musical theater industry for Latinx actors in the upcoming Latinx Actor Training, published by Rutledge. Y'all, Welcome, Julio! <laughs> Hello! Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. You're very welcome and good morning as we record, y'all. It is in the morning. I'm on the East Coast. He's on the West Coast. It's early, but we're here. <laughs> we're doing it. So thank you for joining me. <laughs> yes, yes. So my first question, which is the one I love to ask everybody, if I sent you a text message right now and said, Julio, how are you? How you doing? How you feeling? But you could only reply in emojis only. What would you text me? Well, that's not fair because, you know, at my age, my knowledge of emojis is limited. So I would probably reply with the heart because I know that one. Okay. Um, I know the prayer hands and okay. I'm in a good space. I'm calm. Things are going well. Smiley face because I'm happy. Uh, things okay. are are lining up pretty well for me lately. And yeah. um, maybe the uh, poop emoji because that's my favorite one. Yeah. Okay. Just because it's the poop emoji. <laughs> Just Have you had that not? one before? <laughs> uh, you know what? I haven't. So thank you. You're the first one. <laughs> I appreciate And those it. are the ones that I know. <laughs> okay, great. I'll take them. I might, I might text back and be like the poop emoji. For and you'd be like, because. <laughs> well, one year I was for Halloween. I was either going to be a uh, praying mantis or mm -hmm. the poop thingy, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. Yeah. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It, it is funny. It's actually a hilarious emoji. So you could use it for a myriad of things. Uh, okay. So yeah, I appreciate I appreciate that text. Thank you very much. <laughs> I always I always ask that because I love to see like what people use or like you're like that that emoji represents me. Like that is how I'm feeling without words. <laughs> yeah, and of course I would I don't know if there's a question mark emoji, but I would respond with a question mark as well because I want to know how you're doing. Yeah, there is a question mark emoji. And I'm doing well. 
I'm I am doing all right. I am recovering from a little bit of a food poisoning stomach illness situation today. But overall I'm doing all right. Like think like you said, like things are aligning, things are also shifting though, but like in a good way where I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, let let them shift, let them be. And so I'm I'm in a good space and like good. trying to continually every day release control. That's good, where I'm at. Good. Even when they yeah. shift in a not so fun way, I'm usually like, okay, let's do it because it's meant to be and something fun is is on its way. So Correct. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah. And, and you know, we've had to, le- uh, I will say for myself and for you, like, we've had to learn that. Because I think sometimes when it's shift and it's not, oh, you're like, oh, my God, wait, I don't, like, the, the resistance to it makes it worse. But then it's yeah. like, wait, 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 it's shifting for a reason. Yeah. Even though it, like, pains me right now, <laughs> it's yeah. shifting for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. The educator part of me is having a hard time with that because right now young people have such a difficulty with releasing control because there's so little control for them that that's not that's not an easy it's not as easy as it as it was for for not was but it was an easier lesson for me to learn than than I think it is for them Mm -hmm. understood understood I understand that um and I guess so my first question would be to you is like how did your journey start? So I met you as an edu- educator. Y'all, just to give you a little inside view, he was my um, my acting coach for my grad school auditions. Ah, special place in my heart. And so I met you on the education side. But did you go into the arts as an educator originally? Or were you like, nope, I'm a performer. Like, this is what I do. I'm the performance side. And like, education was like, Wait, I didn't. I didn't know I was gonna do that. <laughs> so how did you how did you get to where you're at? Yeah. Um. Honestly, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a pastor, a bodega okay. owner, and a teacher. So okay, those were okay. my three. Yeah, my three goals. And I started out a musician because yeah. I used to accompany the the junior high school and high school choirs. I play piano, mm-hmm. and I went to school for math and music okay. education. And then okay. wound up getting a D in my first math class. And so I was like, okay, that's not going to happen. But teaching was always my trajectory. Even when I, when I shifted to performance, like all of my teachers knew that eventually that was where I was going to wind up. Okay. Okay. Got you. Okay. So, okay. So with teaching kind of always being, you were like, that's, that's in my pocket. Like I'm always going to teach. How did you get to the performer aspect? Yeah. Um, I was like I said I was when I was doing my my music education degree at Florida State my first semester I auditioned for the musical because I had done one musical yeah. in high school and I was like oh this is fun and yeah. I got into it and um it was the first time that that a director asked me why I was there and I had to like find some words that were mine and it was extremely frightening and I remember looking at the exit going if I run now I don't have to return and I made a decision to stay, and I knew at that point that something had shifted. It was another, mm-hmm. it was a one of the first pivots for me um, in my training and career. And um, so, what was the question? See, this is going to happen to me. <laughs> oh, you're good. oh, you oh, listen. You are fine, honey. Um, the question was, how did you get to being a performer? So, like, you had oh. you knew you wanted to be a teacher. Like, you got yeah. that. But like, mm-hmm. where did the performing come from? <laughs> Sorry about that. So I did that show. And in doing that yeah. show, I decided, you know what? I think I'm going to perform mm-hmm. because I think this may be my route. I was I was smart, but I was smart in, in the ways that, you know, different people are smart in different ways. I had yeah. to study. I had to work hard. I was in a music education program. I had the skills in sight reading and music theory, but I had to work at... Um, everything else. I had to work mm-hmm. at, at the general education courses. And so um, I decided, you know, I'm going to do the, the performing as well. And when I auditioned for the program, I got a rejection letter and I thought, oh, really? Watch this. And so that's yeah. been my motivation. I keep the letter. It's in a file. Every time I get a, a rejection letter, it's a, okay, mm-hmm. great. Let's do this then. And mm-hmm. so I thought, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do mm-hmm. it the performance way. I'm going to go out there and do the thing 
and then come back and teach the thing having just done it as opposed to theoretical. And Ooh. not that there's a right way because my teachers were all phenomenal, but they were not people who had spent, most of them were not people who had spent half their, their career in the industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought this is this is going to be my way in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I like. Oh, that's so interesting. I never knew that about you. But you were like, OK, I'm going to be the performer and live it. And my intention is to then teach it, but mm -hmm. teach what I have lived. Oh, mm -hmm. I like you are from the beginning. You were like 20 year old. You was like, yeah, I'm going to teach this eventually. Like, I already know that I'm going to teach this. I love that. Like you yeah. already had the foresight to be like, but I know I'm going to teach this. So let me like live it. Mm -hmm. But you know, but we have to, you and I, like we, we know when we want to do something, there's mm -hmm. got to be a plan. We've got to plant the seeds. It's not usually like it's going to happen. Like we know what it has to look like mm -hmm. in order to start taking the, the, the road there because mm -hmm. um, I didn't have that many. My father was uh, uh, an excellent uh, example for me of what life could look like, but I didn't have many people as far as careers or mm -hmm. like, I didn't know how to get to where I was going. Mm -hmm. And so I had to like mm -hmm. research it and have a plan. Right. Fair, fair. Yeah. And so how did your, I guess what's my question? How did your plan start? So in essence, once you graduated college, did you, were you like, was your first goal Broadway or was it like, ah, I just want to like work at like a regional theater or like, <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause my, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Mine was Broadway. I was graduating and I was stepping on a Broadway stage. Um, that was my goal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it may, it may be generational because most people I knew weren't thinking like right now, every student that I teach is like, well, I'm not sure if I want to go to Broadway first or if I want to go do regional theater or if I want to do TV and mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a great w confidence, but yes. I was, first of all, I was bro born in the Bronx. And when my okay. father took us out, took us to, we moved to Florida when I was 11. And it's mm -hmm. not like you go back. Once you leave, you don't go back. So okay. for me to go back to New York was not something that I was excited about. And secondly, I didn't, again, I didn't know how to do it. This was before teachers were teaching the business of acting and auditioning and all of that. Like you got your craft and then you're like, okay, go. And now what? Uh -huh, and so uh -huh. I I worked regionally, I worked internationally, I worked in Japan for six months. And then in the fifth year of me working in different states, I, I realized, because I had a friend who said, Julio, you are miserable and you are making us miserable. You need to move to New York because oh, all no. you do is... <laughs> Well, I think I used to complain and I'm, I'm I just, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, so I complain, but it's just... I'm so grateful for everything that, that every experience mm -hmm. it's, I don't know if it's genetic cause my, my, my mother complains, but I know she's happy. So it, I just like, I, I'm just like articulating what, what I'm seeing. And yeah. so it sounded like complaints and you know what, now I got to think about this, but um, yeah. So, so my friend was like, you, you, you need to move to New York cause you complain mm -hmm. all the time about what mm -hmm. you're doing here. And I thought, you know what, maybe it's time. And so, okay. After, and so after, that. So I moved to New York late. Yeah, everything I do yeah. is kind of late. Um, was it late or was it right on time? Mm, <laughs> it was right on time. You're right because had I gotten there early, well, I got there one time that I thought it was right on time, and okay. after two months, I ran out of money. I got a job, uh, my first job performing, and. I've, and I went to see the show and it was dancing in a thong. And I was like, I can't do that. So I wound up going back home and doing another ship contract. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. it, I thought I was ready and I wasn't yeah. ready to whatever it takes to stay here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So the first time wasn't right on time, but the second time was right on time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Understood. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you to that friend. That's a loyal friend mm -hmm. who was like, can you please like move to New York because you're complaining and like you need to stop? Yeah. Like, that's a loyal friend to be like, uh -uh, go, go, go. Like, because you, 
Mm-mm. So I mean, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Just that, that I think that's a, that's a trait of young people that when you're working in the regions, Chicago, Miami, Atlanta, like you're working in cities that aren't New York or LA, but are cities where people make a living. A lot of people, Mm -hmm. like I have friends who work at Disney and they have houses and they have lives, same thing with Vegas. And they don't want someone there who's gonna be complaining about being one of the lucky ones. And so I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's fair, that's fair. Because you wanted something different. Because I do, I have friends are the same who are in Disney, who are in Vegas, who love that. But I know that's not for me. Mm -hmm. And so you had to, your friend was basically, this is not for you. Go. (laughs) (laughs) Like, this ain't for you. Like, thank you for being here, but this ain't for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a a good listener. Thank thank God I'm, I'm able to, like, hear when something is said or something is not said and go, oh, it's time to pivot. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. So you pivoted to New York, mm-hmm. the Big Apple. Here you are, and like again, my question because this was my this was my trajectory in my head. I'm going to Broadway. When you moved to New York, was it I'm going to Broadway, or was it like I'm just trying to be a working actor? <sighs> I don't know that I remember. I okay. hate to say okay. that because I feel like I should I should know I'm going to Broadway. I know I wanted to pay my rent and I know I yep. wanted to be a working actor in New York. Mm-hmm. I know that when I moved to New York the first time, I walked around all of the Broadway marquees and I imagined myself in those pictures and I imagined my name on the cast list. And so when I went to, when I left New York that first time, I did a uh a ship contract, and then I wound up working in Japan. And that's when I saw a commercial of Kiss of the Spider Woman. And I said, there's the show. There's the show. There's me. There is me. And so when yes. I moved to New York the second time, mm-hmm. I, that was the, I booked the national tour of Kiss of the Spider Woman. There were, there were a few, like, I was Dino and this, like, from the Flintstones. So I still did my, <laughs> I was still hustling with those jobs. But I wound up booking a national tour. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, okay. So the national tour was that, like, oh, Boom. Okay, I booked that's the pit in the board. Great. That was my first. Yeah. Oh, my first. Yes, national tour. Okay, got it. And so then from there it kind of unfolded. I'm going to assume <laughs> that things that you did that tour and then did you New York was always your home base, right? And still is your home base? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. So it was like yeah. you go out on tour, come back to New York. Okay, like I know that life. Go out. Okay, I'm going yeah. to do a ship. Come back to New York. Go do that. Yeah. Come back to New York. It's like but I'm back in New York. Yeah. Right. And I actually, I think you're right. I think I, I'm, I knew that I wanted to work in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I was auditioning and I was getting called back to the end for a bunch of things. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, Susan Stroman would call me back over and over. And there was one audition where I thought, okay, this is, this is the one I'm going to book. And then for some reason, I, you know, you have that one audition a year where you just like throw it away, throw it away. Well, I had that one audition where nothing was coming out of my mouth when I was singing. And I went to the, this was back in the day of the the pay phones, but Mm -hmm. I went to a pay phone and I called my parents. I was like, I'm coming back home. And later that week, I got a letter from Susan Stroman saying, hey, the project fell through. You were phenomenal. I can't wait to work with you. Because I was like, I was down to the end for everything. But what I learned from that experience and then booking the national tour was that when I was out on the road is when people started calling those direct that director and that choreographer to ask what I was like. Mm. You're not going to get in without someone knowing someone that you know. Like I just had a student um, uh, book uh, one of the shows and um, the casting director called me and said, mm-hmm. what is he like, Julio? And I said, well, I, I believe that he's ready. I said, Mm -hmm. I'm confident that he is ready. He is young, but he is ready. Mm -hmm. So they're just Mm -hmm. not going to take a chance on their multi-million dollar project, even if you're the most phenomenal talent, if they don't know someone who's worked with you before. Yes. Yes. That's my experience. It's not Mm -hmm. always true, but that's my experience. (laughs) Fair. That's fair. I've definitely had that experience where I didn't know, like it was being... You know, I'm over here auditioning and things are happening behind the scenes where it's like, hey, Anna, do you want to do the show? Wait, what? Who? Oh, I called so-and-so. And and then so we're just going to give you a direct offer. 
What? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, okay, and that's happened a couple times. And I'm like, okay, so you just keep doing what you're doing. That's like, mm-hmm. this, you just... And, but I also know it works in the opposite. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have literally observed it work in the opposite. How is this person? Well, and I've seen someone not get a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of how they've acted before or acted out or... I'd be like... Mm-hmm. Like what we do, we like we are blessed to do what we do. So like, don't take yourself so seriously. You this whole diva throwing temper tantrums and all. Mm-mm. I don't have the energy Ooh. for that. I don't have the energy for that. Yeah. So it goes. You both saw ways I just closed you. myself off. I'm like, hoo, I, hoo, hoo. yes, I saw. I saw. He was y'all. He crossed his eyes and said, "Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute well, now." Because yeah, I I tend if if. I'm asked about a person who I don't have confidence in. Most of the time, I just won't say anything because I'm not Fair. I'm not on this earth to sabotage anyone unless I'm really like that. I would be careful. Mm-hmm. I might, I might if it's someone who's dangerous. And there are there are some people who are dangerous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, but that's fair. I, that's fair. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love the way you put that. I'm not on this earth to sabotage people. No, no. People, people think that 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 I have that power. I mean, we we all do because it's such a small industry. When you're in, you're in. You all know each other. You know. Um, but but I just I I want my again because I I went into teaching because I want mm-hmm. to help the next generation achieve their goals. I'm I'm I love connecting people like you served as a mentor to some of my students. So that's like phenomenal. Like that's, that's heaven to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other part of like, I can't recommend this person. I, I will tell the person sometimes if I can't recommend them, but if someone reaches yeah. out to me directly, I will usually just stay quiet unless they're See. dangerous. Cause some people are. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. So my next question to you would be, in in your pivot into teaching, so when you were in in and out of New York, you're doing your contracts or then on Broadway, was teaching still like woven into that? Or was there a point where you were like, I've stopped the performing as my main focus and now teaching is my main focus and I'll perform when it so happens or like how yeah how did you inf- how did your teaching start to infuse your life if that makes sense I think there may have been a slight overlap because I also okay. I think in 2001 I started vocal coaching my friends I said I know I want to okay. do this and so I'd love to do this <clears throat> on a limited basis and and develop mm-hmm. my craft as a vocal coach and eventual mm-hmm. audition coach but it it was a it was a hard turn it was a hard pivot okay. for me i was doing bells are ringing on broadway and it was a mm-hmm. it was another challenging experience it was a great experience i loved the people but it was mm-hmm. a time when people were not understanding uh-huh. latino and black people in these mm-hmm. golden age traditional mm-hmm. standard musicals Mm-hmm. And so by the by the seventh version of a number I was doing where I was dancing around, you know what, let me not talk about it, but <laughs> I decided to give my notice. And it was in the papers and it was in the New York Times that Julio Augustin <laughs> is leaving, bells are ringing before what? opening. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, and that wound up staying because they wound up cutting the number mm-hmm. and... Um, in that experience, it, the director was Tina Landau, ph- phenomenal director, and she, a, a colleague of hers, a friend of hers, and Bogart came to see the production, and she introduced me. And she says, "Oh, she runs the MFA directing program at Columbia University," and I said, okay. "Oh, well, I'm planning on getting my master's in something," and mm-hmm. she said, "Why don't you look at Columbia?" There was. There was my, there was my light, my direction, my, okay, this is what I'm doing. And I auditioned for Columbia and new were, um, the new school, the, the actor studio. Um, and I got into a couple of schools, but I wound up going to Columbia for acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did it for one year because it was like, I don't want to act anymore. I don't want to act. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I need my master's because I want to teach. And, um, eventually I, uh, 
pivoted to Penn State and finished my directing degree there. But it was it was a hard pivot. It wasn't yeah. a sl- smooth transition. It was like, okay, it's time. It's time. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So wait, I have a question. Okay. I, I, I have two questions. So let me start with this one first. The, that feeling of like, I don't want to act anymore. Was that a hard one to accept or was it one that you graciously accepted? Okay. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm swirling in my you. chair. Y'all, he was <laughs> swirling in his chair like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> it was easy. It was easy because I wasn't, um, even though I had a, my degree was in music, music theater performance from Florida State, yeah. but it was in music. And even yeah. though I was an actor, singer, dancer, I worked predominantly as a dancer okay. who could sing yeah. and cover some roles. I got to cover okay. roles, but I never got to, I, and it's not, I'm, I don't want to, there's no sourness here. It was my path mm-hmm. and I wanted to be in the room where it was happening with those people. But it was usually as a dancer because there wasn't a Julio role at that time. They were mm-hmm. very few, very, very, very few. Um, uh, so when it was time to pivot, uh, it wasn't a hard decision. Like I'm not at Columbia. I got to do some acting, but I got to do like I got to play a, a 78 year old grandmother. I got to do like mm-hmm. Columbia's cool. So I was able to do that yeah. stuff, but I don't I didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to teach. I want to take yeah. a break from being emotionally available all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, I understand that. I understand that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I just ask because I know that there are people pivoting and who are like, there. it's hard to let go of one thing to go to another, but you know you have to. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's why I wanted to ask that question. But for you, you're like, yeah. oh, no, girl, I could wait. I could wait till <laughs> I <to> go. <laughs> it couldn't come fast enough. <laughs> But even for those people who do feel like it's hard to let something go, because I'm right now in that in that shift where I've, after thir- 13 years, I'm back mm. on stage. I'm getting to go. Uh, I'm getting ready to go back on stage, right. where I've been directing and choreographing and teaching for the past 13 years. Um, yeah. So it's never uh, like when I went to grad school. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to finish it at Columbia, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a call from Jerry Mitchell. He said, I need you to audition for this show called what? Never going to dance. Cause I said I was never going to dance anymore. And right. I was like, but I'm, but I'm doing my degree. He was like, Julio, you don't need that degree. And I thought, you know what? <laughs> if I'm, I'm in New York. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do this gonna, right, one more right. time. So, so it's, it's back and forth, which is why I left New York. Also, I couldn't finish my degree at Columbia cause I couldn't be in New York and not be pulled. Fair. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. So, yeah. 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 And at least you acknowledge that. You were like, okay, if I stay in New York, I'm never going to finish this degree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it oh. is, I mean, it, it is like an addiction and you have to get away from, from those people and that location, but mm-hmm. it's, it's always going to be there. It's yeah. that, it's mm-hmm. that learning that is New York is New York city. Ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yes, it will always be there. And I and, yeah. and and I will say, and let me I'll say this for myself, because of the pandemic, I am now in southern New Jersey. So I'm like half an hour outside of Philadelphia. So I do go up to New York. Like I can drive up to New York, but like I'm out of New York. And it's I'm not gonna lie, it's a breath of fresh air. Like I'm in the suburbs. There are trees and grass. I can go outside. Like I built myself a home studio. I've pivoted into podcasting and voiceovers. And I'm like, would I do that if I was still in New York? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, do you need- I, I don't know. Yeah. You needed the distance and Hey, it's okay. It's actually better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It is. Like you said, it I can is. get to New York, but I can get to Philly as well. And I've got my home studio and yeah. Bingo. Bingo. Exactly. Exactly. So then, okay, so after you finished your degree, you then had 13 years of teaching. Now, I know, give me give me the, the short version of like those 13 years of, did you, so, okay, hold on, let me formulate my question first. Um, so <laughs> I guess my question would be, was it always in your teaching, your vision of teaching once you graduated? Was it, I'm going to privately coach, I'm going to go into higher education, or I'm going to do both at the same time? 
Like, because I know some people are like, ah, I want to coach. Ah, I want higher education. Or I don't want to do either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I think I wanted to, I wanted to, to do both. I got lucky because my first teaching job, I was, I was an adjunct at, um, uh, Mer- uh, Manhattanville in Purchase, New York, but I got my first full-time teaching job at City College of New York, which is okay. in the heart of Harlem. And it was just like, I had asked, I remember praying to God saying, I want to be with my people. I just like that. I remember saying, like speaking mm-hmm. that aloud. And yeah. I just wanted to be in a place where people understood me and I understood them. And part of my interview was like, well, I have a kid at home and I'm taking this one. I'm taking care of my grandmother. What if I miss school? And I was like, my job is to work with whatever your challenges are. And your job is to show up and get the work done in the way that you can. 100%. That's all I ask. I ask for your best and your best is going to be different every day. So it was, it was a great experience. It was a great training ground. From there, I wound up. Uh, starting a music theater program in Connecticut and um, didn't think I was going to be doing that. So I kept pivoting. I lost my first husband in a car accident while I was in Connecticut. So I had to like get away and, um, um, and uh, heal. And I got a great job in Virginia and it's Mm -hmm. a beautiful place to heal. And then from there I, I moved to Miami and I'm at Elon. So I've been moving a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it, other than my, my uh, husband's passing Mm -hmm. is that it was the environments today as someone who looks like me, um, Mm -hmm. Afro-Caribbean from New York, I speak the way I speak. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm known to be, I'm accused of being aggressive or combative or difficult. And finally I, this year, I decided to accept that I am difficult. I am difficult Mm. to retain. If you Mm. want me to teach in your institution, you have to provide me with the tools for me to do the job that you've hired me to do. Otherwise, it's just a glass cliff assignment and I'm not interested in being set up for failure. Mm -hmm. And that's -hmm. that's been my educational trajectory, my academic trajectory. Yeah. 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 And uh, mm-hmm. I'm actually in a pivot now because it's been announced that I'm no longer the director of music theater at Elon. Um, okay. I will be stepping down, and mm-hmm. um, which is a, another great pivot. And I'll right. be teaching, and someone else will be stepping into the role. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. I gotcha. Ooh. I just, oh. 13 okay. years in a nutshell. <laughs> 13 years in a nutshell. Uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. Like, thank you. Thank you for that. And I, the fact that you were like, oh, this year, you know what? Yeah, I have decided or accepted the fact that I'm difficult. And it's like, yeah, you're difficult because you're challenging the status quo. And mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, I'm going to accept that because that's what I do. Like, yeah. that's what I'm standing on. I'm, yeah. We're not accepting this anymore. We're not accepting what you think is okay anymore. So, yeah, yeah. I am difficult. Do with that what you will. I call it being an unintentional unintentional activist. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I didn't set out to change the world so much as I just want young people to have opportunities, access mm-hmm. to opportunities mm-hmm. that maybe they wouldn't have had. And so if they see me and if I say, look, it's possible, then yeah. it can happen. Um, yeah. But if you say that aloud, some people get upset because mm-hmm. it's not it's not the way things are supposed to work. I mean, most of the institutions that I've taught at, they were founded on the premise that people like me would not be able to attend. Like you read the the institutional uh, history report of these institutions, that's what they're founded on. So unless you undo that foundation, you're not going to be able to build a place that is welcoming. And young people know that today. They feel it, they articulate it, they just can't point at it because the system is meant to make us look crazy. Yeah. It's like, poke me, poke me, poke me. Rawr, see, I told you. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a lesson that I'm still learning also. Yeah. How to not, yeah. not be, not be pokeable. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, that, I, yeah. I think, I think a lot of us are learning that how to not be pokeable. We're just like, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, just don't waste just the want... time. Just don't. Mm, right. no. yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not teaching you. I'm not getting paid to teach people. Yeah. 
That's yeah. a whole nother episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I did I go off? But that that's another pivot. No, you did, yeah. You did not go off. You did not. But that that could be a whole nother episode, Julio. I'll have to bring you on and be like, okay, let's talk about this little <laughs> nugget, because that's a whole nother, yeah. whole nother episode. But yeah, I mean the institutions around the arts are 100% built upon us not attending in the first place. And then if we do, oh, I mean, you could be here, but eh, we're not going to really do anything for you. Yeah, we brought you here. Go. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's like diversity, equity, and inclusion. To me, I I had an interview for something recently that I think I lost, and I lost it because I said, look, that's a thing of the 90s. 1991, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't do that. I don't do it without access and opportunity. You got to add the A, you got to add the O, and you got to add the B, belonging. Create a space that I feel like I'm welcome. I mean, you don't invite... Oh, anyway. (laughs) Yes. 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 No, I get it. I get it. I get it. I I understand that. And like, oh, yes. Okay, so my last question to you would be, what would be your nugget of wisdom or your piece of advice for artists, and honestly, not even artists, any human listening to this podcast about, you know, life and pivoting and being comfortable with pivoting or not being comfortable with pivoting, but being able to like, just be like, okay, I I trust myself. I made a decision and I'm going to keep going. So any advice on that? I trust myself. I made a decision. I'm going to keep going and I reserve the right to change my mind. Ooh, that. Mm-hmm. That. Because if you look at my list of, like, I don't say I'm a director. I don't say I'm a choreographer. I, I say I, I direct, I choreograph. I don't want to, I'm no longer interested in, in, in internalizing, giving myself that label. Like, these are okay. things that I do, but I'm so much more than that. And at the end of all of those things, I wrote rinse and repeat. Because I get to go back yeah. and pick and choose which one I want to do today. And that's the thing that, this is why I want to be in education and I'm not sure that I'm meant to be in the academy. But yeah. um, young people need to know that they have they can, sh- they can change their minds. Get all of the education while you're paying for it. Get yeah. all of it so that you get to decide today. I'm, like I want musical theater multi-hyphenate, someone who's doing this one day and then tomorrow yeah. you're doing voiceovers. And then the next yeah. day, you're creating your podcast and then you're going to take that job that's for three weeks there. And maybe I'll do some teaching and some coaching and some mentoring and some entrepreneurship and just keep it going and do some real estate, whatever, like live the biggest, fullest life and, and be okay with changing your mind. Ah, uh, I love that. Y'all can't see me. I, I had the biggest <laughs> smile on my face. Y'all, if I could, I'm too connected. I got cords and everything, but I would have ran <laughs> out of my closet because when you said rinse and repeat, Ah, like that's it. Like it's that. And like, I reserve the right to change my mind. I could be something different every day and like be the biggest, like you said, like be the biggest person that you are and let all your creativity out. And like, I think we're coming into that though, if I'm going to be honest, because there was a time that me for myself, I was pigeonholed and I was, nobody else was doing it. I was doing it to myself. I'm a musical theater actress. That is what I do. That is who I am. And the pandemic was like, <laughs> you think that? But watch this. And then I was like, oh, I could do this. I could do that. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. Oh, I could. And now I'm still doing all of it. And theater is kind of left to my agent. Like, I'm mm. like, oh, that's cute. You can submit mm-hmm. me for that if you want. Or if I don't want it, I go, no, thank you. I don't want to audition for that. But yeah. the fact that I can turn down an audition, if mm-hmm. you would have caught me in 2019... I would have cried on the floor at turning down an audition. Now I'm like, no, thank you. That doesn't fit in my schedule. I don't want to do that. They're not paying enough. That makes me uproot my life for six weeks when I could be doing this here. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. And can I say, because I think it's important for me to to say this to you, that when I met you, because you talked about uh, your your career as a music theater performer, which was why you, you, in part, you were going to get your master's. And I remember being nervous when I coached you because I felt I was in the presence of royalty. And I remember saying something like that to you, but not in those words. I was like, Mm -hmm. you are so poised and you are majestic. And I'm not sure these monologues are serving you. So I remember we shifted Mm -hmm. and found a different piece because I was like, you are like, I saw the pivot and I was like, oh, oh yeah. And then when you got an international 
school to recognize that. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, go, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Like, so thank, thank and you, I'm, Leo. and and you've been so amazing to my students, and so thank you for for inviting me to chat because this was good for my spirit too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So before I let you go, uh, two things. One, where can everybody find you on the interwebs? JulioAugustin.com is my email. JulioAugustinNYC is my um, Instagram account. Mm -hmm. Augustin is only one U. A G, A G, A G U S T I N. Not August. Not Augustine. Right. Um, right. So uh, I got you. yeah, and and yeah. again, because that educator part of me, if you have a question or if you need something, reach out to me. I mm -hmm. answer every every. You know, Every email. He, do, he does. He does answer. He does. y'all. And don't <laughs> worry, I'll put it. It'll all be in the show notes. It'll be linked easy and clickable. So it'll be in the show notes for everybody. Um, and I must say to you that I acknowledge you. I celebrate you and I uplift you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Thank you. I, I do the same. I do the same. Yeah, I appreciate it. We all need to hear that. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope you have been informed and inspired by this week's episode. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes are out. To stay up to date and in the know about merchandise, exclusive content, and how to support the show, please subscribe to the newsletter at ayanabay.com slash podcast. That's A-Y-A-N-A-B-E-Y dot com slash podcast. And there's a link in the show notes. This show's executive producer is Ayana Major Bay and editor is Kieran Niemant. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll speak to you soon.